Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Dave. I'm here to talk to you today about some things going on in the world, um, especially about the government and Social Security Administration, Social Security card. Now, today, it's uh, quite common to go on the internet, especially here on YouTube, and find a bunch of videos, people talking about how the government's usurping all the sovereign powers of the people, they're undermining our liberties, taking away our rights, and bringing us into a police state and making us slaves to the system. And I'm going to tell you that it's partially true, that's their agenda, but the biggest problem is, is the ignorance of the people. And if the people weren't ignorant, we wouldn't have this problem. But today, people are ignorant, they're spending too much time watching TV, uh, reading student magazines, other forms of propaganda. So they're all worried about drinking and fornication, material things and wealth. And uh, that's certainly gonna not going to help uh, bring us about, bring about a better world. And uh, the information I'm here to share with you today is going to help you understand what's really going on in this world and it's going to empower you to, to uh, make a change through studying the law and you're going to see that you know this isn't a hopeless system that we're living in and that we do have power and the people the, the power does reside in the people now today most people believe that the social security card is their card and that's just utterly false as a matter of law but most people don't understand that because they don't know the law so and they don't have a proper understanding of what's going on well, I'm going to show you how to easily prove that the social security card is not yours and I'm going to uh, show you and teach you what actually is going on with that card and what the relationship has really created in accepting that card by signing it or using the number uh, written on the card in order to transact any form of business uh, in the United States or elsewhere so alright <clears throat> now if anyone's got a social security card on them, I urge you to pull it out of your back pocket right now. I personally don't have a social security card and the trust I'm unconscious in physical capacity to um, currently misplace that card and it's in the process of getting another one. But I've looked at plenty of other social security cards, so I know this is a matter of fact. Um, so flip that card out and to the back side and I want you to read the, the, the statements on the back and one of the statements will say this card is the property of the Social Security Administration and must be returned upon request and after that statement it's going to list an address of where the card is supposed to be returned so it seems quite obvious from this statement that the card couldn't possibly be yours because the Social Security Administration clearly said that it was their property and reserved that ownership now that statement on the back of the card as a matter of law is a reservation of ownership and from the record, which card is part of the record, uh, that proves that the Social Security Administration is the owner of the card. So if you're holding that card and it's not yours, what's really going on? Alright, well, I'm going to here to tell you that that's what happened was is they offered you a card and if you accepted that card by using it or signing it, uh, the relationship that took place was a creation of a trust. And a uh, simple definition of a trust is when a piece of property is held by one for the benefit of another all right and this is exactly what's going on today and this even relates to the biblical prophecies when Christ talks about that we cannot serve God and mammon and that even the very elect will be deceived and that if uh, you know where your treasure is there your heart will be also and I'm going to talk about how those scriptures relate to the Social Security Administration and the card that they offered and ma'am and law I'm gonna go over all that so but first I'm gonna go over the, the basics in the law and show you why it's a trust and how to prove that it is a trust alright so if anyone gets it if you go to the law library or look up in the Black's Law Dictionary or any law dictionary look up a trust you'll find several definitions you'll find definitions for many different types of trusts but the basic definition of a trust is when a property piece of property is held by one for the benefit of another so in this case with the Social Security Administration they offered you a piece of their property which was the card and asked you to hold it until they requested it back now such a res reservation of ownership according to the Uniform Trust Act or the Uniform Trust Code which can be found in the District of Columbia Code now I'm not going to tell you exactly where it is because part of knowing the law and being uh, you know educating yourself in law so you know for yourself is doing the research and find out the information for yourself so you know it's the truth 
and you don't have to rely on anyone else to tell you what's going on because you know from your own personal study. So I'll tell you that you can find it in the Uniform Trust Code or the Uniform Trust Act, uh, why it's a, uh, a trust. And there's a section there called uh, Methods for Creating a Trust. And if you can do a little bit of research, you'll easily find that. And one of the things that it says <clears throat> in Methods for Creating a Trust is that if a owner of a piece of property transfers it to a trustee within their lifetime, that that is sufficient for creating a trust. So, obviously, Social Security Administration has created a trust. They gave you that piece of property, the card, asked you to hold it, you agreed, and now the trust relationship has been created. So, what happens in a trust? All right, the thing that happens in a trust is that the interest in property gets split up between uh, different parties. And generally what happens is the trustee or the trust has what's called legal title to property held in the trust it means they can uh, buy sell property transfer it and act like any other person with regards to property whereas the beneficiary which would be corp us in this instance as the social security administration is an agency of corp us um they're the beneficiary and the beneficiary is the one who holds what's called equitable title in a trust so we have legal title and equitable title, the trust or the trustee. They're the ones acting out the, the legal title and the beneficiary has the equitable title. All right, now let's take a look at what's really going on um, and how significant this is when it comes to law of the United States, what's really going on. Now, <clears throat> when that trust is used, that number, on the card identifies the trust along with that all capital letters name. Now, most every everyone I know that's ever gone for a job, when they've applied for a job, they think that they're the one applying for the job. But on the application, it asks for a social security number and the person will generally write the social security number that they believe is theirs on the application. But as we just found out that it's not there, it's not their card and that's not their number. That number identifies a specific trust. So the person who's really being employed is a trust. So it's a business entity that's being employed. So when, if, it, if that's the case, when time for payment comes around and funds are transferred to the employee, the funds are actually being transferred to the trust and not the person who physically did the work because that person is only lending consciousness and physical capacity to the trust. You see, a trust can't act by itself. It's created on paper. It's basically a contract, duties that are created as a contract. And <clears throat> if, a tr if a trust can't act by itself, the only way it can act like all other business entities is they must borrow consciousness and physical capacity from a living being in order to act. So the person learning consciousness and physical capacity may be doing the work when they're employed at a job, when, when the trust is employed at a job, but the trust is the certainly one getting paid. Now, if you also look at the bank account number where that trust cash its checks on the application for that bank account number is also that number, the, so, the, the number on, from, from the Social Security card. And that number <clears throat> proves as a matter of record that it's the trust's account. So if we have a trust that's getting all the funds paid to it, being put into the trust bank account, and uh, then those funds are subsequently used to purchase pieces of real property, tangible property, intellectual property, whatever kind of property they're, they're buying, that property is going into the trust because the trust is the one who spent the funds. Now if we look at the large scale picture of that, What's really happening is, is people are ignorantly lending consciousness and physical capacity to these trusts, thinking that they're building up riches for themselves or treasures for themselves. But what's really going on is all that property is going in and being held in trust, which the equitable owner of all said property <laughs> is the Social Security Administration, who, like I said, is an agent of, agency of Corp US. So they, they were formed under the authority of Corp US and, uh, Subsequently, as a matter of law, Corp U.S. is the equitable owner of all that property.